Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are all having a lovely day. Uh, for those of you guys that have not been on this channel before, this is Kaimana Conservation. Uh, we actually are a channel that is completely focused around marine conservation and marine sciences and uh, helping people to understand what, um, how the ocean is important to them at home and how they can make an impact in their own lives. And today that's going to be really important for us because we are going to be uh, covering the topic of top 10 sustainable items to use to make a more sustainable home and specifically we are going to be covering the kitchen because the kitchen is one of the places where when I first started going into reduced waste living and no waste living it was where I really struggled the kitchen was probably my number one um, location where I just was producing loads and loads of trash so we'll get right into it we're gonna go through the top 10 products that I would recommend for a sustainable kitchen the first category that we're gonna start with is actually when you're not at home most products that we have at home are reusable we've got our plates and our dishware um, and our cutlery for example but when we go out we usually don't take that kind of stuff with us usually we hop in our car with our bag and we drive to uh, a takeout restaurant with our friends or we go out for a picnic uh, on the beach here in Maui um, so but it is really important to take some things with you because you might get to that takeout restaurant and be like dang it like I forgot to bring my reusable cutlery or whatnot and then you end up having to use what they have which is usually plastic um, so one of the main things that I like to take with me and this will bring us to topic number one is reusable cutlery so I've got a couple options here uh, my bamboo cutlery is currently at work so it's not joining us today for this video um, but one of the really popular ones that you hear about when you're on YouTube or when you're wandering around online or scrolling through Pinterest one of the first things that you see um, is reusable cutlery and it's usually in the form of bamboo um, I personally am not a bamboo cutlery fan I don't think that bamboo um, lasts very long or very well in this kind of an environment it's tropical it's salty humidity uh, it tends to deteriorate um, but there is nothing stopping you from doing what I do which is actually just using a regular metal piece set so I'm gonna hold this up here so this may look familiar to you guys this is literally just a regular piece of silverware that you would get um, at the store you would use it at your house you can even bring it from your house um, and it's not huge, like granted this is a, a rather large knife, but you can still take it with you and it still works grand. Um, so these are going to be the first option for reusable cutlery and if you are just starting to get into the no waste lifestyle, this is a really good first option because you don't actually have to go out and buy anything, you're just bringing it from home. Uh, so that's our reusable cutlery number one. Now, like I mentioned, my bamboo set is actually at work, so that won't be joining us today, but I do have a very unique, uh, I don't know many people that actually have this style of cutlery, but I love it. Both myself and Brian have one, and it looks like this when it's folded. Um, I don't know if you can really see too well there, but what's really cool about this is it's nice and small. It fits into a pocket even or a purse like I don't I'm not a big fan of big purses but it does fit into like a small little bag or a backpack and the cool thing about this is you can actually extend out the silverware that you need and depending on where you buy it this was bought at um, a local outdoor store that we have here and I love it the it's metal so I, I still really like that material that metal material um, the knife is actually sharp which is something that you don't tend to get in bamboo cutlery um, so it is actually really helpful and this one actually has a little bottle opener as well so perfect for picnics and it slides right into your purse or your backpack and you're set to go for the day nothing that says you have to have metal um, I've seen some in ceramic um, I've even seen people use plastic cutlery that they have gotten from a restaurant at one point and during takeout and they still use it. But if you're gonna go out and buy something, I would definitely recommend doing uh, either bamboo or metal or glass or ceramic. Those are really good materials to do. Uh, so the next one that we're gonna be doing is reusable bottles and mugs. So it's kind of a twofer for this one uh, cause I felt silly separating the two. Uh, but reusable bottles and mugs, I've got a couple options here just to show you. Um, as you guys can see, I use these bottles a lot. There's a bunch of dings across the top. Um, but this is just a good uh, demonstration here of the types of bottles that you can get. So um, this is called a 50-50. It's a little bit of a knockoff of the uh, Hydro Flask. Um, but I like it because it actually has, instead of a single loop, it's got 
three little holes there so you can actually put your hands in and you can hold it, which I tend to do when I'm out walking. I like to hold it, but I don't want to feel like my fingers are constricted. Um, but yeah, so a lot of uh, companies actually will make these. They'll sell these. They're um, kind of advertising for them. This is from Konohonu Divers on the Big Island. If anybody ever wants to go diving, I really recommend going out with them. Uh, but I really like this one. I don't know if you guys can see from there, but it's got a really fun uh, little decoration on here. It's a coral reef. so And it's all accurate to Hawaiian fish, so I thought that was fun. Um, it is metal. Um, so it helps to keep everything really cold while you're out, especially here. It gets really hot, um, but no matter where you are in the world, if you have some ice water in here, it will stay in there for hours, which is really great. Um, and another option that I brought up, I went to University of Sydney, same thing. They, they tend to use these bottles as a great form of advertisement, but it also means that you get to carry around a um, container of cold water uh, while you're out and about. And this one's got a nice wooden top as well, wooden and metal. So no plastic in either of those two products and I really like them. Especially here in Hawaii, you definitely want to take water with you. It, it, more than one bottle is better than one because you never know, it might get really hot. So those are the water bottles. And then I also have a couple of mugs here. Um, I personally am not a coffee drinker, so I had to steal some of Brian's for this. Um, but these are some of his, um, his cups. So this is a glass one, so it's glass, and then this is uh, kitchen grade silicone on top, um, and this is kitchen grade silicone as well. So it still gives you that nice, um, nice squishy texture. It's easy to clean. Um, it is sustainable. It lasts for a really long time. Uh, but this gives you an idea of just like how many material options that you have outside of plastic that are still considered sustainable. So this is the glass one. Um, this one's actually mine, but I donated it to Brian because I don't really drink coffee. Um, but this is actually from Sydney. You can see there's a nice little whale on there. So got to support my, support my stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's a, a nice little coffee container uh, that you can take with you. So I'm not a coffee drinker, but I am a tea drinker. So this is my little guy here. It's made out of glass. It's double glass. So you can actually see there's two different containers there. So that helps to ma make sure it actually stays nice and warm. Um, and just inside there is your nice little wooden lid there. And there's a, a tea container, like a little loose leaf tea container. So you can take your tea to work with you or to the park and then you have all of those options. And then you can have obviously different sizes as well. I had some pretty large containers for myself because I'm not worrying about things being compact, um, but they do actually sell other kinds of materials too. Actually, give me one moment. I actually have a really good example. All right. So here is a, it looks like a disc. I know it doesn't look like a cup, but what's really cool about these is you can twist off the lid. It's made out of that same kitchen silicone and check it out turns into a nice collapsible cup. So if you are trying to ball on a budget or if you're trying to make everything small in your bag or if you don't want to carry things around, this is a really good option. And then when you're done drinking, you can just squish it right back down and it'll fit back into your bag. All right, and the next one is still kind of in the same line when you're going out and you uh, need materials. One of the things that I always used to struggle with when I was growing up, or honestly even now, I'm still guilty of it, is I forget to bring a reusable straw with me and then you go out to Starbucks or to Jamba Juice and you're like I really want a smoothie or a milkshake um, and then they give you that plastic straw and you're like dang it like I was so close I was doing so well so one of the things that I would recommend and they are metal um, they do sell bamboo straws as well but again I'm a big fan for glass and metal I think they last longer um, especially out here but as you guys can see I've got a couple different types so this one still has the curve in it but it doesn't have any silicone on it this one does have silicone one of the complaints that I have heard before about metal straws or glass straws is they just they like chewing on the end of a plastic straw and that give um, so the metal and glass straws hurt their mouth so this was the answer to that was to have this little uh, silicone piece on the end so you can kind of nibble on it while you're while you're going. Um, one thing that I would recommend if you are going to buy a metal straw, make sure you don't just buy the straw. Make sure you buy the straw cleaner <laughs> um, because it is very hard to get down in there and if you do end up drinking something other than water then it's going to get sticky and gross in there. So you need to make sure that you have the ability to clean it. Um, health comes first. Um, so that is a, a way to get down into this straw. But I really like these. Now I must admit that these little straws don't get used often by me and that is simply because I am not a big straw user for regular drinks. Like if I have a water 
I'm just gonna sip from the cup. It's I've never really been a straw drinker. Um, although I do know some people that when they go out, they are insistent on a straw. They don't know where the glass has been. So that is an option for you. Uh, but one of the things that I absolutely bring with me everywhere is this bigger straw right here. So this um, was actually, I purchased it in Sydney. It's a much larger straw. It comes with its larger straw brush. As you guys can see, it's a little bit wider. Um, and this is specifically meant for drinks that are thicker. So your milkshakes, your smoothies, and boba tea, because boba tea was a big craving of mine when I was in Sydney. And this is a really great way to reduce your plastic if you want that boba tea, but you don't want the straw. Um, so I, I definitely go around with this particular straw, just not the, the narrow ones. So that kind of goes through all of the going out style um, materials, like you got your cups, your cutlery, and your straws whenever you're going to go out to uh, hang out with your friends or you're going to go out to the beach or the park, uh, depending on where you live. Um, so those are really good. The next theme that we're going to talk about is actually when you go shopping. Um, so shopping is one of the hardest things that I have found in the past to reduce my plastic. I was always coming back with so many single-use plastic bags because I would always forget to bring a reusable bag to the grocery store. So reusable bags is the next one. Um, and I do have a couple of options here. You guys will notice I've prepared a lot of options for each one of these in the list. Um, so as you guys can see, this one right here is a nice and flexible. You can kind of crumple it up and shove it into your bag and it doesn't take up much space. If you forget to bring your bag, which is what I used to do, a lot of places sell bags. So this is from Target. I have several um, bags that I have purchased at other places. I've got some from uh, Target, a couple from Costco and Safeway. Um, all these reusable bags though are really great outside of just there. I use the Target bag everywhere now because I'm more disciplined when it comes to carrying my bags everywhere. Um, but these are a really, really good way to uh, reduce the amount of plastic when you go grocery shopping. So. These are the bags that I currently have. I have several of these smushy ones because they are in just about every nook and cranny of my car, my purse, my backpack, my work office, my house, everywhere. They're everywhere. Uh, but I do have several of these out as well and these are a little bit more heavy duty um, and they help to carry heavier items. The second part of shopping, so it's still in the same, um, same list, this is still under number four, is produce bags. So I was finding that I got really good at using the sustainable bags, but when I went to the produce aisle, I still needed a method of containing everything. Now, I was a little less particular when it came to like, let's say two or three potatoes and I would just grab one and put it into the bag and I didn't need to contain it. But there are some items at the produce, uh, in the produce section that you need to keep together, like tomatoes or uh, onions if you don't want them shedding all over everything else in the bag. So this is a produce bag, so you guys can see it's got a little drawstring right here, um, and it's made out of natural fiber cotton, and it is breathable so you guys can like put things in it and then cl close it up as opposed to using those really flimsy plastic bags that come out on the roll at the grocery store. I always used to feel so guilty about using those, but I would always forget to bring one of these, so I would have to use them anyway for certain products. So getting more disciplined, I'm much better about carrying these with me to the grocery store now. So that's a little bit of uh, the shopping kind of all in one. Um, next thing is gonna be storing. So when I get all of those materials back from the grocery store and I have all of these food items in my reusable grocery bags, well now where do I put it? The reusable kitchen storage is kind of a blanket term that I'm going to be using. Reusable kitchen storage can encompass a whole slew of things. Um, but the first one that um, I feel like I used to use a ton of, and I used to throw away very regularly, were Ziploc bags. So this is a sustainable version of a Ziploc bag. It's reusable. It's made out of that same kitchen safe silicone. You can see it just opens right up. It's got that same press and seal style. Um, and this one is a, is a flat, um, flat edge, so it would it would lay flat. You guys can see right down in there. And I have a bunch of different sizes. I've got the little ones all the way up to the gallon bags. And these are really helpful for me to store things like herbs. Um, oh goodness, I used to use these for everything. Sandwiches, when I'm going to work, you just put it into the bag. Um, that was my reusable Ziploc. Um, and then I realized that I got the flat on the bottom was 
a little bit difficult to manage because they were just flopping everywhere. So I discovered this one right here. Um, and there are several different brands of all of the things that I'm talking about. We're just gonna go over what they are, not necessarily who's providing. Um, but this is a similar Ziploc bag pattern. It's a little bit thicker, same silicone material. It still has that press and seal, but if you look, it actually is flat on the bottom. It's nice and flat. So I can put it down on a counter or inside of the refrigerator. Say I wanna store, um, you can even store soup in here, believe it or not. You can pour the soup in there and then it just sits instead of, you would never be able to do that with that other Ziploc. So this was a really nice way um, for me to have a little bit more freedom with what I put inside of the bag. So that was uh, Ziploc number two. And then not everything gets to be in a soft squishy bag. Um, so a lot of people actually have these at the house. So if you can't have a soft sided, then you go to a hard side. Um, and then jars are actually a really good one. So this is this is a tiny one. Not everybody has the tiny ones. Um, but the jars vary in all different sizes and they're relatively cheap. And I store a lot of things in jars. I store spices in jars, sugar, uh, flour, in small quantities obviously on the counter. Um, but these are a really, really great option um, to store smaller things. Um, I also use them as little snack pouches for when I take things like trail mix to work. It makes for a really nice little confined area and portion control. And last but not least, this uh, storage in the refrigerator or out on the counter is going to be these glass uh, containers. So I used to hoard the... Um, the rubber mains or Tupperware, Tupperware. So I used to hoard the Tupperwares, but they were all the plastic ones with the plastic lids and they'd go bad or if you put something hot and then the plastic would start to melt and I always got so frustrated. So this is Snapware and I actually really, really like Snapware. It's got that, again, that kitchen grade silicone around the top and then this is a glass bottom. So it's uh, capable of actually being in the microwave. It can handle being in the oven, uh, in the refrigerator, the freezer, like it's a very solid piece of work and they come um, in all different sizes. So round, square, smaller, larger. My biggest one is about this big, this big. Um, so I really like these and I would really recommend them. So that's our snapware. So for number six, we're still under the, um, the general scope of food storage. I've got one that I didn't know if I was really gonna like it, to be honest with you. Um, I know that when Brian first brought up the concept of it, I was a little bit hesitant, but it ended up being one of the best purchases that we have as far as food storage and keeping things fresh in our house, and that is beeswax wrap. I've got some beeswax wrap here. We've got multiple different sizes, so this is actually a relatively large one. It uh, is getting close to the point where it needs to be re-waxed here, but it still works wonderfully. Um, you can use this to replace tin foil and saran wrap or cellophane wrap in your house. And uh, as a really good example of it working in progress, so this is a much smaller one right here, and as you can see, we're keeping a lime in it right now. And it keeps the, the produce especially nice and fresh. We use it for uh, limes, lemons, uh, onions, avocados, and they work really, really well. I was really surprised, I'm not gonna lie, I am a bit of a beeswax convert um, because I didn't think that they would keep my produce fresh. Um, however, I do think that the beeswax wrap does exactly what it's uh, marketed to do. It keeps it really nice and fresh. And uh, it is a little bit more flexible. It can store much smaller items that the glass containers are too big for, or just don't reduce the amount of, of air. So I really, really like beeswax containers, or beeswax wraps. So uh, coming from somebody who didn't think that the beeswax wraps were going to work, um, I would definitely recommend beeswax wraps for you guys. So that is all for food storage. I was a little bit of a long-winded list. Uh, next thing up is going to be the cooking. So I've got it, this is gonna be another twofer because it feels silly to separate it. It's gonna be your cooking utensils and your cookware. Your kitchen utensils and your cookware are stuff that you're gonna have in your house already. So by all means, I'm not telling you to take potentially your unsustainable, so say you have a plastic spoon or a plastic spatula. I'm not telling you guys to go out and throw that away and replace it with a, a wooden one. If you have something, keep using it. Don't don't throw it out. Um, the whole goal of this is to be zero waste. So if you replace it with a sustainable product, but then you throw that product away, you've still contributed to the waste when you necessarily didn't have to. Use the rest of your plastic materials until they need replaced. And then once they need replaced, then you can throw them out and then buy the sustainable alternative. Kitchen utensils, so again, I've got a, a whole stash here. 
This is uh, a selection of the different materials that um, you can have. So again, here's some metal. This is that silicone. It's nice and flexible, uh, really good in spatulas and slotted spoons. Um, and then I feel like everybody is familiar with the already popular bamboo uh, mixing spoons. Um, so these materials are really important to have in your kitchen. It's safer, healthier anyway and then uh, it does replace plastic in your kitchen. So this is just a small taste of some of the things that you can use in your kitchen. Um, and that's for kitchen utensils, and then also cookware was the other one. So I did not bring over all of my cookware, so it's not one of the things on the table, but I did bring over just, again, another demonstration of, you know, like mixing bowls. You want to have like glass mixing bowls as opposed to your plastic mixing bowls. Um, so here's an option there. And then this is really dinky. I actually use it for um, salts and herbs and garlic on the counter um, but you get the gist of it like using a, a wooden bowl or a glass bowl or even a metal bowl my metal bowl my metal bowl is huge uh, so it's not over here right now that you know using those different materials are a really good way to transition out of plastics when the time comes and last but not least is the kitchen cleanup so cleaning was another thing that I always was producing a lot of trash and I just didn't know what to do because you have to clean, you have to clean things. You can't just leave things gross. So what do I do in order to reduce plastic where I can? So one of them was the using reusable towels and reusable napkins. So I've got a couple options right here. I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but the unpaper towel actually had a name before it became popular. It was called the towel. So the towel, um, now this is a nice towel and I know that everybody's got like the nice towels and the not so nice towels at their house. This is my nice towel, um, but it's really good for, you know, washing your hands or just like patting something dry. Um, and then you also have your unpaper towels, which are basically reusable towels that you can destroy. Um, so this is an example of one of my unpaper towels. Now these can be anything like this was, um, Actually, it looks like shirt material, like that waffle shirt material, but you can make this out of anything as long as it's absorbent. So I know a couple friends that use unpaper towels that are just cut up sections of their old cotton shirts. They're gonna get gross anyway. That's the whole purpose of a paper towel. If you were gonna be using a regular paper towel, the paper towels that you would have used would typically go in the trash. Well, they're always gonna go in the trash. So it's usually wiping up things that are really gross, like oil stains or spills um, that are gonna really stain. So this is not gonna be something you'll put out and it'll be pretty on display, but it is something that you can use um, that is going to be useful for cleaning up those spills. And it's okay if they get discolored or uh, stained later. And then last but not least, uh, as far as absorbency for those paper towels, this is a really cool, little uh, dishcloth. Um, they're kind of like if anybody's ever heard of Sham Wow before. Uh, they are super absorbent dishcloths. Um, they're not meant for like scrubbing or cleaning, but they are meant for absorbing like a, a big spill. So you could like lay that down and it like doubles or triples in size. Um, so this is a really good example of that. You guys see I'm still rocking Ocean Love uh, in pretty much everything that I do. I don't have any napkins out right now, but a, a regular napkin that we think of is usually a disposable napkin that you wipe your hands, you're like, oh, it's dirty, and then you throw it out. Um, but nothing stopping you guys from getting some nice reusable napkins. So I currently have some linen and cotton napkins and they just roll up in the little napkin ring and you put them on the table and it's it looks nice. It's one-time purchase and you can just wash it and then reuse it. So I've got a nice dark napkin. Um, that way the stains don't show up as well. It's like a dark blue um, and then I can reuse it as many times as, as I want. The last several years I've never had to purchase uh, a box of napkins or a box of paper towels. I've just used what I've already had. So it's like a nice easy front cost and then basically free for the rest of your life. That is the part of the cleaning. Obviously you can't clean without soap. So one of the things that I see everywhere and I used to be part of it was the, the liquid dish soaps always come in those big plastic containers. Now, if you are going to buy a liquid dish soap, make sure you buy in bulk. But there are they are starting to sell this really cool dish blocks now. So this is a bar of soap right here, which is really nice. And this is, uh, this is a hand soap right here um, because my dish soap is 
has, looks like it's seen better days because it's been used. Um, but dish soaps are kind of the same thing. It's like a block and it sits in, behind your sink and you can use your, your scrubber and then go over it and then rub a little bit off and then you can scrub it onto your dishes. It's the exact same way that you would use a regular uh, hand soap. You'd rub it and then you'd, you'd clean whatever you need and then rinse it off. Um, so we like to use the dish block soaps in our home for our dishes and for our hands um, and also for shampoo bars, but that's a whole nother video uh, for bathroom uh, sustainable products. But using a block of soap instead of liquid dish soap or liquid hand soap is a really good change because as you guys can see, um, this is actually in a paper container. So it's paper and rope, this little string right here. So it's all sustainable packaging as well as a sustainable product, which is really good. So not only are we looking at sustainable products here, but you also wanna pay attention to the packaging as well. And that brings us to the last in the, uh, the realm of cleaning, and that is going to be your cleaning supplies. Um, so like I mentioned, you've got the soap, but you know, most of us are used to those plastic green or blue sponges um, that usually deteriorate and there's lots of little chunks, that's all plastic. So when it chunks up, it just creates even smaller pieces of plastic that goes down your drain and ends up in the ocean. So if it is going to deteriorate, which cleaning supplies will, then I like to use ones that I don't mind uh, going down the drain. So this is actually, there's two things here. So these are both cleaning supplies that we use. This is a hand scrubber. You can use it on your dishes too, but dishes tend to be dirtier and this would stain easy. So there's the, the sponge on the inside is a natural sponge, and then on the outside it is an abrasive cotton material. Um, so it's a natural, natural exfoliation and sponge in there. Um, so that's a really fun option there. And then this one right here is what we use for the dishes. So you guys can see it's got natural bristles right here. It's got the bamboo top, and this is what you would use to scrub on the soap. So little soap demo here, pretending this is the soap sponge. You just do a little scrub, and then you could scrub it right onto the dish. So it helps you really like get into the stains and the grease marks on that dish, get everything off, and then you can wipe it down with the with the a lighter sponge. So that kind of wraps up all of the sustainable items that I had on the agenda for today. Now granted, there are so many more options. Some of you guys may have all of this already. Depending on where you are in your journey, you may be like, oh yeah, I knew all of that already. That's awesome though. That's a really good confirmation that you are on the right track. And there's so many more um, ways to reduce. You can start looking at your plastic packaging for your new purchases, or you can look at reducing packaging uh, on your, the food itself that you buy. So there's always more things to do. For those of you guys that this is your first time out the gate and you're trying to reduce your plastic, but you just didn't know where to start, this is hopefully gonna give you guys some inspiration. One of the things that I would recommend is that you don't jump into this all at once, especially if this is a new part of your journey. Uh, you do want to make sure that you don't go out and just buy every single thing that I listed in their next grocery run and then try and employ it all at once. It can be overwhelming if you do it that way. I know that there are some things that I started to use. Uh, for example, the reusable grocery bags was a really big one. It took me months to work up the discipline and to get really good at remembering to bring them. Uh, same thing with reusable water bottles or reusable cutlery. If you don't remember to bring them, then they don't do you any use. Even if you own them all and they sit in your kitchen drawer the whole time, then it's not gonna be doing any good. If you guys have any recommendations on some other items that I may have missed, feel free to put that in the comments below and I'd be happy to add that to the next round. I'm hoping in the near future to make another video that delves even deeper into sustainable products and some more things Things that you can get uh, maybe in some other rooms of the house. Remember that uh, I can only do as much talking on YouTube as I can, uh, but it's really everybody going out and doing their part and reducing their plastic that's going to make the difference. So let's create waves of change uh, in everybody's own home because no matter where you are in the world, you do have an impact on the environment and the ocean. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you guys learned a lot and you're inspired to make some changes in your own life and we'll see you guys around next week. Mahalo.